Hey there modders, so I've been requested to show how to do collisions with the mountain underscore B. So that's just the mountains that are outside when you look onto the Park P map. So Beckwith Park. So the first thing you want to do is grab open your Park P UPK file in new model. Find the mountain. So I've got the mountain here. If I go tools, export current object, it exports it. Open up the export folder. And then I find my name of the package, Park P. Uh, it's a static mesh, so I go into static mesh 3, down to mountain B here. So it will be called mountain B.pskx, rename it to PSK, and then open up Milkshape. Now I go File, Import, Unreal PSKX, navigate to it wherever it is in your system open it up and sometimes you won't actually you won't see anything which is weird but you know it's there because the grid's gotten smaller so if I export as a FBX alias FBX and I call it let's see where do I want to put it I usually have a setup that I use but since it's just for a tutorial it can go in here stuff so I followed the naming convention that has been given, mountain underscore B, and that will save it as an FBX. So an FBX is basically just, um, it's the standard format for exporting meshes. Um, it's uh, usable in Unity, UDK, most game engines I believe. Uh, also, it's also importable by a lot of modeling uh, programs. So now that I have that, I can find it wherever it's gone. So I should have put in FBX models. So I found it here. So if I go into my UDK and bring over my content browser, so I've got a a package here called test level package, which has got the boost pad from the other tutorials in it. So if I grab this package and I click import, I can go and find this FBX. So if I go into wherever I've kept it, wherever the hell that is again. So here we go, if I double click this, it'll bring it up into the import settings. So I want to keep it as the name I had it before. It's a static mesh, so that's the import type. Everything else you can leave the same. Um, So press OK. Oh, this this might crash. Oh, all good. All right, cool. So no collision. That's good. Right click. This is very important. Edit using Static Mesh Editor. So now, if you select Collision, you select Remove Collision. It shouldn't have any collision on it anyway. And you get rid of these three here. So you, you don't use a simple box. You don't use simple line. You don't use simple rigid body. So we're going to be doing um, complex collision. So if I go back and in my scene I drag it in and as you can see it's huge, move it there and then I right click it and I convert. So it's currently a static mesh so it can't move and its collide is going to be weird. But if we change it to an interactive foliage actor it basically means it's a static mesh but you can hit into it. That's pretty much what that does. And then you have to double click it to bring up its properties. Um, go into... not collision, where is it? Here we go. The main collision tab here. You want it to block all. So if you leave it as default, touch all but weapons. No idea what that does, but block all just to be safe. So you want to block the rigid body. A rigid body is just um, like a person or your car. Your car's a rigid body. Collide complex, so collide per poly, so on a per poly basis. So if you don't check this, it probably won't work because simple collision is using one of the boxes that we are like a blocking volume, but we don't have one. So we click collide complex. And then you exit this and you have it in your package. Save your package. 
if you don't know how to make a package, um, I believe I went through it somewhere in one of my tutorials, maybe on the setup one. So then I go build, build all. Wait for that to build. Not sure how long this will take because it's a pretty big mesh. So the bigger your scene gets, the more increase in the light mass it'll have to calculate. So there we go, exit that, no big errors, that's good, always a good sign. So now if I save all, I don't have to save this, um, I've been using textures, so sometimes it says I have to save it, but I don't want to save it. So now that I have this done, I've saved it, I've exported it and everything, I go into my, sorry, into my maps and mods folder, I grab the map, so this is my map. I believe I saved all. Just going to make sure. Yes, I definitely saved all. Alright, so opening up my mods and maps again. So this is my current test level 2. That's what I'm using. So if I copy that, and I should already have one in here, so I'm going to delete that. And chuck this new one in there. Remember to rename to UPK. Then you open up your Rocket League map loader. So um, I think this might be an older version. So if I click load on that, there we go. And now I should just simply be able to open up Rocket League and unless the Rocket League gods have decided against it, drive on that. Oh. It's not in here. Do I have the right package? Always good to make sure you have the right package. No, I don't. See? That's very important. Test level package. If you don't have it, then the meshes won't show up. I'm going to drag that one in now. There we go. Ah, rookie mistake. Even I make them. There we go, here he is, in all of his formidable glory, and I can drive on him. I've never been so happy to be a mountaineer. Whoa, that wasn't good. So as you can see, there's still a bit of issues with the colliding. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, I should still be able to collide on most of it. It's something to do with the angles. It has an issue with it. But it's okay, because I have my little base of operations here. So everything's alright. And my Rocket League crashed. So that's not to do with my map. That's just to do with um, my Rocket League just crashes sometimes. Not quite sure what it's to do with. Might be to do with my graphics card. I don't know really. So that's it for this tutorial. So I hope that has helped a bit.